Hi everyone and welcome to another Random Thought series. This one's on Salesforce and we're talking about best practices in lead life cycles, lead recycling, when to convert things from being a lead into an account and contacts, how to handle pushing that back again if the lead doesn't turn into something you want to sell somebody um, something to, all that sort of stuff. We'll talk about the native out-of-the-box functionality, in other words, how Salesforce is expecting us to use their stuff, talk about some of its pitfalls, and then consider the alternative ways that we've seen implemented in the marketplace, which have, uh, have been kind of good, but also maybe give you some guidance as to uh, the pros and cons of those. So let's just have a little bit of history. What's on the screen now is something you may have seen in the past from Salesforce. This is the, the way they conceived Salesforce in the late 90s. The whole concept is in a perfect world, a lead is generated, and at some point you decide, you know what, they're good enough for me to now take seriously, and I'm gonna generate a, a new account, because that company clearly won't exist inside of my database. We'll generate a new contract contact, because clearly that lead won't exist there before in this perfect world, and we'll generate an opportunity, maybe one, two, or three, the stuff that you actually want to sell to this person. So let's just uh, recap by going through that process. Here is a web to lead form that is on my website. I'm just going to submit that, and that goes directly into Salesforce. Of course, this is one of many ways of getting leads into the Salesforce environment. And unsurprisingly, there it is. So at this point, I've got a lead, and this may have come, as I say, from the web to lead form. Clearly, it did, um, but it might also have been a uh, an import from a from a, a trade show. It may have been an import from a list that we bought from a database vendor. It may be um, an import of an old Excel spreadsheet of names that we've happened to to find lying around. In this case, we've now got this John Doe chappy into our database and we can do some stuff to him, market to him, and eventually we just say, you know what, this person is good enough for me to convert. So I will convert that, and at this point, as the slide says, so I just mentioned, it will create a new account, it will create an opportunity, which I'm going to say test op, and when, when we do that conversion, Three things are generated. First of all, the lead has disappeared. So the lead, in actual fact, does still exist inside of the database. It is now just read-only. Salesforce won't allow any of that to be touched, even through the API. It's become a read-only version of it. And then it's created a John Doe as a contact underneath a new account. And beneath that, there is an opportunity as well. So in other words, the account now owns the opportunity and also the contact, just like this diagram. Here, the account owns the contact and the opportunity. So that all sounds perfect, doesn't it? But if you're in this perfect world where it happens, then happy days. But that just isn't the real world. The real world has multiple leads from the same account. The real world has multiple accounts with a very similar name. The, the real world has accounts where there are different divisions that are actually still different companies and there's multiple opportunities playing within them. Now here's some of the pros and cons of that standard behavior. First of all it is so 90s it's it's just not funny. It's, it's the way Salesforce would have perceived and contemplated the world working back then. The reality is with the sort of organizations that we're selling to and are using Salesforce um, it, it's just not suitable anymore. Um, but if you were to use it, and we encourage people to certainly consider using the native functionality as much as possible, you're not bending Salesforce. If you try and do some other workarounds, which we'll show you in a second, you are bending Salesforce. The point is that wizards exist inside of, um, uh, and I don't mean in the Harry Potter way, I mean wizards exist inside of Salesforce for importing leads direct into here. So there's processes that if you're starting to do slightly different things, um, then you're going to start coming up against some of the, the limitations, I suppose, of uh, you having to manage the ongoing changes that you to, to Salesforce. Wizards exist for loading leads and also for accounts and contacts, and we'll come back to that in a second. 
reporting is built this way. So if you're starting to do different things to handle leads in your environment, you better be clear on how your reporting is going to work. Um, but one of the, well, there's a bunch of cons here. It's just not intuitive to have leads separated from accounts and contacts. So if you're working in a major corporation and um, uh, you are working with a major bank, um, if somebody else who perhaps isn't in your division, if you're the enterprise sales guy, you need to know everything about that bank. It's not acceptable for somebody else within the leads area of Salesforce who may or may not check that you're the account owner at the account side, and that person might not even have access to your records because you own that account. It's just not acceptable for that person to be able to see and working the humans in the leads area just because they've been loaded in there. You can't group together people from the same company easily. And the reason I say that is that leads are completely separate from accounts and contacts. Indeed, when you come when it comes to actually building reports, you will notice that the standard um, uh, functionality that Salesforce provides says, right, what would you like? Would you like a report on leads or would you like a report on accounts and contacts? And typically those two things are immensely separate and Salesforce goes out of its way to, um, to, to keep them separate. Um, so here's another one. Let's just say that you've got an account to whom you've sold maybe 30 different products. If a new lead comes in from a new area, how do you handle that? Should you keep the lead separate or should you immediately convert it and put it under your accounts with a new opportunity? Um, all of these things are up for, for question. And one of the other things is if, if we go back to this world where we've converted a lead to an account, and let's just say it is the first time you've done that, what happens if you then don't make the sale? Do you pass that lead back? Well, you can't. There's no way of unconverting a, uh, an account and a contact and an opportunity. Once you've done it, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. What you would need to do is delete the account and re-import the lead. That's something that you wanted to do. And then there's lead recycling. So when do you say that it's qualified enough to convert? Now, I know you can put standards in place and you can talk to your sales chaps about what is a qualified lead and what isn't. But always there is this discussion between leads, accounts and contacts and when you go about doing it, the convert, I mean. So with, with that in mind and all of these pros and cons, um, what are some of the ways around this? Well, here's one. Um, and it works for some organizations. Um, first of all, uh, you go and you change the native behavior to say that every lead must have an associated account. Now that, of course, would certainly alleviate our, our problem here, whereas um, you can't easily group together people, all, all humans, all contacts and leads from the same organization. Well, you can here because not only would leads be associated with accounts, but so would uh, tax. So if I hop over into Salesforce, I'll show you just how easy it is to actually create such a, a lookup. Any system administrator worth his salt would be able to do this in just a few minutes. Whether it makes sense to do so within your organization is something slightly different. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create myself a new custom object on the leads Ob uh, sorry, a new custom field on the object called leads. And I'm going to create this thing called a lookup relationship. You can't put a master detail relationship on leads, for those of you who are interested, you, but you can say that I want to have a relationship between the lead and an account. Click on next. And this will take me just a couple of seconds just to set up. I'm going to call this account name. And that will do. Let's move on. Add this to the page layout for leads. And we're done. So now I'm going to go to um, the page layout for leads. And I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I just want to make this a little bit easier 
for us to see what we're working with by moving that to moving that to the top and whilst I'm there I forgot to do it I'm just going to make that a required field okay so that's it that's all I've done now I'm going to go back to the leads area and I'm going to create myself a new lead I can't work with John Doe of course because John Doe has been converted so I'm going to go to my lead area and create a new one so here's a second way of us generating a, uh, a new lead um, and I'm going to call this Jill Doe um, marketing director director that'll do and now it's asking me for a new account name and it's got a little lookup just here so it's forcing me to go and have a look at all the different accounts that I have within the database I'm going to select this one the company name I could have that default to RMS based on this one or I could move the, the company or make it invisible through using a, um, um, a visual force page um, and I would just go through the the normal process of, uh, of, of accepting or, or uh, well, filling out all of my lead information click on save and it's now generated now what that's done is if I look under the account name for RMS it's not only got the contacts beneath RMS which is John Doe and the opportunity but looky down here it's also got this leads thing down here which is so so now if I was to go and look as I would ask my account uh, my system administrator to do and I customize the accounts page I can move that section for leads much higher up so that I can now have all of my all of the human beings that are within the organization right next to each other so one of the biggest problems that I had on the uh, um, on the PowerPoint slides a few moments ago was I can't keep all of my leads and my contacts all the human beings together within the same company it's just not intuitive to have those two things set apart well now if I go back and look at the accounts area you'll see that both tact is under the account and also the lead is under the account if we're doing this what are the some of the pros and some of the cons? so let's look at those in a similar sort of matrix then um, first of all it's not native you're most certainly bending Salesforce outside of its uh, natural habitat in order to uh, achieve what we're achieving here um, wizards don't exist for loading uh, accounts and leads they do for accounts and contacts you saw that earlier on and they do for loading leads too um, but things like web to lead certainly doesn't work this way not without quite a bit of effort to, to fix that because you'd basically need to do a lookup before the lead is uh, is then inserted into the database and create that as a new account object before it does that um, and reporting built this way as you saw earlier on you can have leads uh, reports for leads and you can have reports for accounts and contacts you typically can't do both and Salesforce does go out of its way as mentioned before under things like campaigns where it's hard um, to do a report on certain things um, or uh, for uh, campaign members that are leads and also for contacts it's it's not straightforward um, the good news is it's intuitive now so you've got um, your leads and your contacts all nicely bound together within the accounts page and if that's what you're trying to achieve then happy days um, one thing to just point out here is that any custom relationships on on lead etc over in the leads area might not be brought through into the new when you do the the new contact record when you do that convert typically it only takes over the the standard um, stuff that's on um, on the lead the other thing is um, and this is probably the most significant one is 
when you do an import of leads, and let's say that you're importing 10,000 or so leads from, a, from an event or from a trade show, typically what you would normally do is just hit the import leads button and follow the wizard and you'll be done in a little while. In this instance, what you're going to have to do in order to maintain the integrity of every lead requiring an account is that you would need to import the accounts first. So you have all of the company names and the company telephone numbers and the company address. You import all of that first. Then you go back and import into leads. So you would import all of the leads. Now at that moment, of course, those two things are not hooked together. You need then to use the data loader, for example, to create that relationship between the lead, in other words, the human being, being part of the account. Now that's fraught with quite a bit of danger because of course chances are if you're importing 10,000 a lot of those accounts will already exist. So when you do the import over at the account side you'll need to take that into account as far as dedupes is concerned. Um, so there's there's lots of, of different ways and um, of, of pros and cons for doing this. So in the next video what we'll do is we'll talk about RMS's preferred method for doing this. Um, but as a, a bit of a, a bit of a spoiler, what I'm going to say here is that we would much prefer to use the standard capability, but just rename some of the nomenclatures and different ways and processes of doing things. Um, so we're very much in the boat of, uh, of of keeping the standard ability, where leads are leads, leads are human beings who literally um, we don't have a relationship with yet. And accounts are organizations that are businesses that we have some form of relationship with. And that might be we're about to sell to them. We think they're ripe for us to sell to them or they're an existing customer. And we have different account types in there or different ways of grading the accounts in order to um, determine what sort of um, person they are. Now that does cause uh, some considerable angst um, and it doesn't help um, this scenario where it isn't easy to group together people from the same organization. So your senior sales exec who is selling to a major bank is going to get cross that potentially somebody is loading the major bank up into the leads area of Salesforce and potentially that person is, um, uh, is then calling down on his territory. The reality is how often does that happen and, and uh, the other question you can ask yourself is how do we guard against that and there's certainly other mechanisms for doing that um, which would be not making your life any harder than it already is. Anyway, that more about that in the next video. For now I hope I've compared these two standard behaviours versus um, very much uh, personalised um, behaviour in some detail. See ya, bye.